All right, everybody, I know what you're thinking. Is he going to review another Bigfoot movie? You're damn right I am. Okay, 1976 is The Creature from Black Lake, but before we go any further, we're going to head to where we always go, to the trailer. Let's do it. Do you really believe there's a creature? Mm hmm. Yep, I do. from Black Lake is coming to a theater near you. A Jim McCullough production, rated PG. Okay, this motion picture was directed by Joy N. Houck Jr. Uh, he was an actor, but also a director. He did movies like The Women of Bloody Terror, uh, Night of Bloody Horror, the Night of the Strangler, The Brain Machine. If it was bad, he basically directed it. Well, or should I just say everything he directed was kind of bad. But either way, an actor, a director, and he brought us this, and this is classic, so who gives a shit? All right, let's get to the cast. Okay, playing Pao Hu was Dennis Fimple. He was a guy whose face, as soon as you've seen it, you knew it because it was so distinct. He had like he, he did not look like the kind of a guy you would see in a Hollywood action or a Hollywood any kind of film. He was very distinct. He was in like a ton of TV shows. He was on like uh, the A Team, The Fall Guy, uh, Simon Simon, Matt Houston, Dukes of Hazard. He was he was on he was on a million things, but he was also in a lot of movies. He was in the uh, House of a Thousand Corpses, the Rob Zombie flick, you know, with the gray hair and all freaked out. He had a bit role in uh, King Kong. He was in a lot of those Disney night movies, you know, the Apple Dumpling Gang, and he popped up in Swing Shift. So, really cool career. Passed away years ago in a car accident, kind of sad. But Dennis Fimple, dude, you're always on the scene. You're always doing your thing. God bless you, man. That's it. Let's go. Okay, playing Rivs is John David Carson. Now, he was also in Empire of the Ants that uh, I reviewed earlier in this series a while back, so I'm going to name probably a lot of the same things that you know he was in. But he was in Empire of the Ants, he was in Stay Hungry, but he was in a ton of television shows. He was in Marcus Welby, The Partridge Family, uh, Chips, Taxi, Police Woman, uh, what the hell else? Uh, Three's Company he popped up on. So he was in a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Eight is Enough even. I think he was even on Eight is Enough, I remember seeing him. So he was in a bunch of stuff, cropped up all over the place. John David Carson, pfft, he was around a lot, worked a lot. Was always If you were in that 70s, 80s group, he popped up and you knew the face. Okay, playing Grandpa Bridges is truly one of my favorites. Doug Taylor. Doug Taylor was in probably a quadrillion motion pictures, and he was in a quadrillion TV shows. I mean, it was almost the thing of legend. He was in uh, Burnt Offerings. He was in uh, Gator, uh, 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 Macon County Express. Uh, he was in 1941, that, that great Steven Spielberg movie that they sometimes overlook or they sometimes badmouth. He was in Used Cars, The Best of Times, The Getaway, Blackjack, Evil Knievel, A Man Called Horse. He was in tons of movies. You knew him, you seen him, you loved him. Doug Taylor, respect. Okay, and playing Joe was Jack Elam. Yo, Jack Elam was awesome. He was in a trillion shows, much like Doug Taylor. Some of you may remember him the most for playing like the crazy doctor in the Cannonball Run movie, but he was in a million things, and you knew him because he had that beard, and he had the crazy eye, and he had that look that was so distinct and so not Hollywood. 
I love Jack. I mean, he, anyway, he was in a ton of stuff. He was in, obviously, he was in The Cannonball Run. He was in uh, Pony Express. He was in uh, Henny Calder. He was in Night of the Grizzly. He was in, uh, oh God, so many movies I can't remember them all. But he was also in a lot of TV shows. Anything playing Cowboys, he was always there. He was in The Wow Wow West. He was on Bonanza. He was in uh, Gunsmoke. He was actually in a really, 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 really cool epi uh, episode of Kung Fu with David Carradine way back in the day. So, then look that one up. That was a great episode. Anyway, Jackie Lamb, dude, he was he was just, as soon as you seen him, he had that graveled voice. He always kind of played that gravelly guy. You didn't know if he was going to puke on you, drink with you, or murder you. But he was awesome. He was in a ton of stuff. Jackie Lamb, love it. All right, let's get to the story of this thing. All right, the story of this thing is simple. There's a big, angry Bigfoot out there. Bigfoot's not a nice guy in this one. He's an angry Bigfoot. And the movie starts out with Jackie Lamb and another guy, and they're out there fishing in the swamps and the bayous, and the creature actually kills his friend. Yes, Bigfoot actually snuffs somebody right in the beginning of this motion picture. People, I hate to break it to you. Then we cut to a classroom, and you see these two young guys who are just enthralled with this story, and they want to get out there, and they want to investigate with anything to do with Bigfoot. There are a couple of college students, and they just get some money together, and they grab a van, and they head south, and they're going to go looking for Bigfoot. Along the way, they meet the sheriff. They meet the sheriff's daughter. They meet Grandpa Bridges and his family who take them in for the night, but freak out once these guys bring up the monster because it was too traumatizing. They meet the sheriff's... Did I tell you about the sheriff's daughter already? Ah, I can't remember. They wind up meeting Joe where he tells them the whole story and shut up about the fishing. And I'm not going to tell you anything more than that, but that's the gist of the story, the whole story. It's a Bigfoot movie. It's not complicated, everybody. It's a Bigfoot movie. Okay, I'm going to tell you flat out why I love this motion picture. Pacing... This motion picture has a lot of the things that the other Bigfoot movies of the time have, whether it was Credo, uh, The Curse of Bigfoot, or whether it was The Legend of Boggy Creek, or any of that kind of stuff. It starts off with a lot of montages of swamps and all that kind of crap. Much like Curse of Bigfoot, the next thing you know, it cuts to a classroom with college students, and then it's scenes in the woods, and it's scenes down south with a lot of the, you know, salt of the earth people of the area, and it's that kind of vibe. You get it. It's a Bigfoot movie, man. It's going to take place around woods, swamps, and in the country folk. That's it. But this one really did a few things that I thought was just great. Uh, it had incredible pacing. It had a great vibe to it all the way through. They never rushed it. They never dragged it. It just had a nice even keel. It was what it was. And they gave you especially enough time to get to know Pahu and Rivs and really know the characters and care about the characters. And like uh, The Legend of Bogey Creek, everybody just came and went really fast. I loved Bogey Creek. Don't get me wrong. For a docudrama, it was amazing. But, you know, one person came in, next person go out. You didn't really get to know any of the characters all that well. And something like uh, in The Curse of Bigfoot, you know, you didn't really get overly wrapped up in the characters all that much. You didn't care. There was a lot of characters, and they each had a few lines, but you didn't really get drawn in. The thing that really rocked about The Creature of Black Lake was that it just, it, it, gave you time to spend with the two main guys. And you became like, they were so regular guys. They were such regular dude dudes that you were like, oh, I know a guy like this, and I know a guy like that. They weren't intellectual snobs. They weren't like, you know, assholes with bad attitudes. They were just two guys going on a little adventure. And you wound up like digging them as people. And so now you care about what happens in the story, no matter how goddamn ridiculous the story gets. So pacing, character development, the right amount of use of the Bigfoot creature. He's never really in your face. He's a shape most of the time. He's backlit, stuff like that. You can't see how bad the costume looks because I'm sure it looked horrible most of the time. It was just a well-done, low-budget, good time for an hour and a half that you should watch and you should enjoy. If you're into the Bigfoot rage, if you're into the Curse of Bigfoot, if you're into the Legend of Boggy Creek, if you're into all that kind of crap, you're going to have to see the creature from Black Lake. Just go watch it, check it out, have a good time, enjoy yourself for a little bit. It's a Bigfoot movie, and it's a good Bigfoot movie, period. I've seen a lot worse shit come out later in, in modern times on like Sci-Fi Channel and all that kind of crap. This was well done, enjoyable, go check it out. Old low budget shit, well done, well directed, well acted, well spent time. All right, people, gotta go. Catch you later. Bye.